There's a lot more official news now. The first one was expected. Sean Smith has been released. He was due 8.5 million with no dead money and wasn't really worth it. The biggest thing is, he pleaded guilty to assault charges and will be spending a year in jail. If there's any questions about his playing ability, he's going to have to wait at least another year to find out. There are questions about him on the field, but there's no question about what should happen to him due to off the field. The other cut was Marshall Newhouse. It saves 2.25 million in the cap. He just wasn't very good and it didn't justify the cause. The Raiders need cap space and cutting Newhouse was expected. The problem is, the Raiders still need a right tackle. My personal preference is drafting a right tackle this year and moving him to left tackle next year. Overall, the Raiders are taking the patient approach with free agency. Fans might not like it, but I do. Free agency is what I call fool's gold. The ones with cap room to spend are teams that generally don't draft very well. The Raiders don't have much cap room, and keep in mind, Khalil Mack must be extended. He will eat up a significant portion of the cap room, and the Raiders are better off spending the money wisely. A prime example of fool's gold are the wide receivers. Michael Crabtree could still be released, but he's only due $7.7 .7 million. Crabtree is proven and productive. Meanwhile, wide receivers are making a ton in free agency. Sammy Watkins is paid top 3 wide receiver money, and Paul Richardson is getting paid while only having 1300 yards and 8 touchdowns in 4 years total. Crabtree is much more productive at half the price. He could still be cut, but cost won't be the main factor. Also on the cornerback market, teams are paying a premium. Teams get in trouble paying above average players superstar money. Trumaine Johnson is going to make $15 million a year. That's a lot of money for a guy who never made the Pro Bowl and is rated as average from Pro Football Focus. The Raiders were rumored to be interested, but not at that price tag. I'd rather spend the money on two lesser cornerbacks and fill more holes. Now for the news. Jordy Nelson has been released and the Raiders are interested. He's visiting today. He's going to be 33 and doesn't have the speed he once did. The Reggie Nelson Green Bay connection is strong so this pairing does make sense. The thinking is, Crabtree could be let go for Nelson. I'd rather keep Crabtree. He's younger and already has chemistry with Derek Carr. Nelson is more of a red zone threat, but I don't think it's a big deal either way. As for free agency, the Raiders only have three signings so far. Derek Carrier has been signed to a three year deal. He will come cheap and essentially does what Lee Smith did. Carrier is more of a blocking tight end and fills the need in Gruden's system. Carrier is less of a blocker and more of a receiver than Smith, but that's not really saying much. Essentially, the Raiders got a younger, more athletic blocking tight end. This came as a surprise, but Lee Smith has been re-signed by the Raiders. Jared Cook is the number one tight end, but there's versatility on the rest of the tight ends. They can all block and are okay pass catchers. Smith is sneaky enough as a receiver that defenses still have to honor it. He's not a true receiving threat, but will be on the field often. There's plenty of tight end depth now, and I don't think they all make it out of training camp. The last signing is Griff Whalen, formerly of the Ravens. Not a big name. However, he could take the punt return duties and he's shown he can be pretty good at it. More importantly, he doesn't fumble like Jalen Richard did last year. Also, he fits the mold of a slot receiver more than Seth Roberts. Whalen is more of a short, quick area receiver. I doubt he seriously contends for the number 3 spot though. Anything more than a punt returner would be a cherry on top. The first few days of free agency are days I would rather avoid players. They get paid a premium and few players are worth the cost in the long run. Keep in mind, the Raiders signed Reggie Nelson, Sean Smith, and Bruce Irvin all in one free agency period. Yet, the best signing was Crabtree on a one-year prove-it deal well past the beginning of free agency. Let's look at these type of players that the Raiders could sign. While the top cornerbacks are getting paid handsomely, there's still some cornerbacks available. The biggest fish is Rashawn Melvin. He's 6'2 and one of the better cornerbacks in the NFL the last few years and is only 28. The Raiders are reportedly interested and I thought he would get a big deal like Tremaine Johnson. Since he's made it past the top free agents, now is the time for the Raiders to get him. Speaking of cornerbacks, the Raiders own TJ Carey is signing with the Browns. Cleveland has a lot of cap space and I figured Carey would follow the money. He signed a 4 year $31 million deal and that's a high price tag for a solid slot cornerback. The Browns have a ton of cap space and need to spend it. I thought the Raiders would bring him back, but not at that price. Defensive tackle is another area of need and the Raiders are interested in 33 year old Tom Johnson. He's not splashy and will be a short term fix to the problem. I like the Raiders to try and get one of the bigger names out there on the market still. 
there's plenty of players still out there who are younger and probably willing to sign a short-term deal at this point in free agency. Muhammad Wilkerson signed a one-year deal worth $5 million. I hope Sheldon Richardson will do the same, but with the Raiders. Wilkerson's best is better than Richardson, but Richardson is consistently better. He fills a massive need and is extremely productive. There are plenty of options like Daquan Jones and Dontari Poe who will likely take cheaper deals now that free agency rush is over. The best and most proven defensive tackle is going to be Indama Kasu. He signed two massive contracts already and is still very disruptive. The problem is the cost wasn't worth it for the Dolphins. He's still very productive but is 31 and is on the back half of his career. I'm guessing he's going to look for one last big payday. If he fails to find it and wants a short term deal, then he will be by far the best option for the Raiders. The Raiders own Danico Autry signed a 3 year deal worth $17.8 million with $6.5 million guaranteed. He's a solid pass rusher who the Raiders tried to replace but never did. He's bad against the run but does get pressure on the quarterback. The contract he was given was pretty fair and my guess is the Raiders didn't want to re-sign him. My personal top free agent is Navarro Bowman. He's seeing what's out there on the open market and there doesn't seem to be much interest. The Raiders want him back but at their price tag. Bowman is a leader and made a huge difference once he signed with Oakland. The Raiders should try and sign him now. If they had tried to sign him the first few days of free agency, then the deal would be much more expensive than right now. In teams in the division, the Broncos signed Case Keenum. He had an amazing year last year but the Vikings were pretty cold on him overall. He's been below average most of his career outside of one year. The Broncos are hoping he can keep it going. Kirk Cousins was the player they wanted but the Broncos don't have much cap space. I personally am hoping Keenum plays like he did with the Rams. The Broncos are trading away Trevor Simeon. He's a proven commodity at this point and will be a backup quarterback for a long time. I have no doubt the Raiders would have lost to the Broncos twice had Simeon been under center the second time. Now with Case Keenum, the Broncos are hedging a lot on one guy with one year of production. The weirdest signing in the division though is Sammy Watkins with the Chiefs. They're paying him $16 million a year which is good enough for third best receiver in the league. His production is a whole other question. There's no doubting his talent but he's too inconsistent for that kind of money. The core of Kareem Hunt, Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey and Sammy Watkins is scary though. Patrick Mahomes will have everything he needs for his first year as a starter. In sad news, Sebastian Janikowski is visiting the Chargers. It makes sense since the Chargers need kicking help and Janikowski is one of the best and most consistent. However, it's just weird to say Los Angeles Chargers kicker Sebastian Janikowski. It just doesn't feel right. Selfishly, I just want him to sign with another team. I wish him the best but not with the Chargers. Overall, the Raiders stayed away from the top free agents at insane prices. Would the Raiders have been better if they signed the top players? Absolutely. However, the price must justify the production. Top teams generally stay away from the big names in free agency. Outside of Stephon Gilmore, the Patriots haven't signed a big name in years. Now that it's a few days into free agency is when you fill the holes. The Raiders should see who's available and pounce. The Raiders can get players where the production outmatches the deal. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far into the video, please consider subscribing. I'm trying to get to 1000 subscribers so I can get my YouTube partnership back. Like the video if you enjoyed or thumbs down if you didn't really like it. Thanks for watching again guys.